This is the very first part of an end-to-end -end Databricks project where we will be implementing a full use case from scratch end-to-end, -end, leveraging tools such as Lakeflow from Databricks to ingest data into the platform and to process it. We will be also training a machine learning model using the Mosaic AI functionalities and we will be also using lots of new features within Databricks such as Databricks apps and Lakebase. By the end of this video series, you should have a very good understanding of how the different components of Databricks work together to deliver an end-to-end -end data and AI solution from the initial ingestion to the insights at the end. This very first video is focusing mainly on ingesting data from a streaming data source, in this case, Amazon Kinesis. And then in the following videos, we will step-by-step -step also look into the other components. Now, let me quickly introduce the use case we will be working on in this project. Imagine you're working for a car insurance company. With Databricks, we want to solve two things. First, we want to bring all data of our company together, meaning the customer information, the claims data, the policy data, the telematics data that we capture in the cars. We want to create a single source of truth within Databricks so that we can run proper analytics on top and at the end take smarter business decisions. Second, we want to improve the claims process at our company. Currently, it's super manual. So whenever a customer submits this claim of a car crash, a human manually checks everything. We want to automate that within Databricks. So we want to automatically verify several things, such as what was the driver's speed, right? We got this from the telematics information. Things like, is the customer even eligible for this refund based on their policy and things like that. And then maybe also super interesting, does the car damage described by the customer, does it even make sense? So they upload a picture of the car crash whenever they submit a claim. And then they self-classify basically the severity of this car crash. And what we want to do is we want to train a machine learning model based on several images of car crashes. And we want to automatically classify their uploaded image and then we also want to check if the classification from our machine learning model matches what the customer has described. So to make this happen we are building the Lakehouse architecture on Databricks. We will ingest data from three key data sources. We will have a SQL server holding customer policy and claim information. We will also ingest data from a data stream. In this case, it's Kinesis data streams where the telematics data is streamed into. And we will also ingest data directly from an object store, in this case from Amazon S3, where the actual images of the car crashes are uploaded. For the ingestion, as well as data quality checks and transformations later on, we will use Lakeflow within Databricks to train the car damage classification machine learning model. We will use Mosaic AI and its ML flow capabilities within Databricks and then expose it via a model serving endpoint. We will build standard reporting dashboards for this insurance company using a SQL warehouse as well as AI BI dashboards within Databricks. And we will also make the data available through a natural language interface using Databricks Genie. And finally, we will create a portal for the customers to submit their claims. And we will also have an admin view within this portal to review all of the claims. And for that, we are going to use a combination of Lakebase to get this low latency access to our data, as well as Databricks apps to build the actual front end. All right, let's switch into Databricks and get started here. So before we dive into the first ingestion pipeline, let's have a quick look how our catalog is set up, how our Unity catalog is structured here. So we have one catalog called Smart Claims Dev. This will be the main catalog we will be working with. And inside there, we have four key schemas. The first one being the landing schema, where initially our files that are not yet converted into Delta format land in our object store, right? And then we have the typical three layers of a medallion architecture. We first have our BROS schema here, where we will transform our data in Delta, but leave it as is. In the silver one, we will do our first cleaning operations. We will do some standardizations, things like that, some data quality checks. And then in the actual gold layer, we will have our aggregated data, our joint data ready to consume by, for example, NBI tool. Cool. 
For the first data source, we would like to ingest streaming data. In our use case, we have those telematic sensors in the different cars and they stream data into Kinesis Data Streams. Kinesis Data Streams is a managed service by AWS. It's kind of similar to things like Kafka, where you can stream messages in and then within Databrix to ingest it into the Unity catalog, we need to read from the stream and create Delta tables out of that. For this, we will create a new Lakeflow declarative pipeline, formerly known as DLT. And all we have to do is click on new ETL pipeline, provide a name here. Let's call it Kinesis Ingestion. Let's provide the default catalog and schema. We can now read and write from different uh, catalogs and schemas, but this will be our default one right here. And we select Smart Claims Dev and Bros as we would like to directly transform the data into Delta format and store it in a browse layer here. And here we select start with an empty file and we select Python as our language. In this case, we could also do that with SQL, but for now let's stick with Python. And what you see here now is the new Lakeflow declarative pipeline UI. It's kind of an IDE specifically designed to work with Lakeflow declarative pipelines. It's currently in beta and it's it's super nice. You will see in a second how the end-to-end -end workflow looks like. Here on the left side, we have an overview about all of our files in this project. So let's maybe rename this one to Kinesis Simple as we will start with a simple example here. And we're good to go. On the right-hand side, you will see later on the graph being built automatically and visualized. And on the bottom, we will later see the actual tables created by this pipeline here and also see some sample values to make sure we are on the right track. Now, what we want to do is we want to read from the Kinesis stream. So first of all, I'm importing some libraries that we will need later on. And then we are defining some Kinesis specific configuration parameters here. We, for example, provide the stream name. So this is the Kinesis data stream we would like to read from. It's located in the US East 1 region and we want to read it from the earliest position. So we want to read the whole stream right from the beginning. And then this part here is also super important. So we need to authenticate to our Kinesis data stream from our Databricks cluster. And there are several ways to do so. But what we would like to avoid is somewhere storing hard-coded secret values. We also don't want to mess up with some tokens that we need to maintain, that we need to rotate. And for that, the recommended way to do so is going by Unity Catalog Service Credentials. So you see here, we specified the service credential called Kinesis Service Credential. And this is something I have created already. Let's have a look in the Unity catalog for that. So on the Unity catalog, if we go to credentials right here, you will see exactly this Kinesis service credential, right? So if you would like to create it, it's, it's super straightforward. You click here on create credential. It's not a storage credential. It's a service credential right here, which is supposed to be used to access several cloud services uh, other than, than storage accounts, right? All you have to do is provide a name as well as an IAM role. And this IAM role is basically allowing us to access the Kinesis data stream. We don't need to maintain any secrets or rotate any tokens or anything like that. And it's all governed by the Unity catalog, which is super helpful. I don't want to show you all of the details, how I, how I set this up. I will put the documentation in the description so you can have a look how to create in general those service credentials. And just to quickly maybe um, see how it how it looks within AWS. So I created this role here called Kinesis Service Credential Role. I gave it the proper permissions to read from the stream, to list the shards and, and so on and so forth. It's all documented what you need here. And then I also provided this trust relationship needed to our external ID, which is basically the connection to our Databricks account. Now, as we are already in AWS, let's also look into the Kinesis data stream that we are going to use. So there is only one over here, and this is exactly this telematics stream in US East that we will read from now inside Databricks. All right, now we have the configuration set up. We can authenticate 
to our stream through this service credential right here. Now let's look into the first implementation of our, let's say, most simple code to connect to the stream, to read from it and to write into a delta table. Here I provided some Lakeflow declarative pipeline code for that. I'm calling the table right here telematics test. I'm giving it some additional metadata which you will also see later on in the Unity catalog. I'm describing that this is a parsed Kinesis data stream holding telematics data. In this case, it's not parsed yet, but we will change that later on. And it's really the most minimal implementation, how to read from the stream and write into Databricks. All we are saying here is we are reading a stream from the format Kinesis and we provide as the options all the Kinesis configurations that we have provided here at the top. And now we are already good to go. So this pipeline here is configured as a serverless Lakeflow declarative pipeline. We could add some additional configurations, but I think for the first test, it's good to go. We click on run pipeline and see what happens. And there we go. Our serverless cluster is up and running. We are reading from the stream, as you see right here. And we have written 40 different records into the target table. So this is the beauty of this new DLT UI over here or the new Lakeflow declarative pipeline UI over here. You see right away, first of all, the graph. You can see it alongside the code that you implement. And you also see the actual outputs here. So you see this telematics test table got created. And we can even click into it and see the sample data here. So we see what was actually written into the Delta table without the need to yeah, open another tab, go to Unity Catalog, click on the sample values and, and so on and so forth. Now you see we have different kind of columns. We have some metadata sent over from the Kinesis data stream and then we see the actual data column here, but it's still super cryptic. And the reason for that is that this is only the byte data that we now ingested. So we are reading the actual bytes from the stream and as we have not performed any kind of parsing or any kind of implementation logic to make this proper readable data we see only the bytes here so this is what we are going to change next we are creating a new file right here and we call it kinesis parsed The configuration we can just copy over here and then we will make some more adjustments to actually also parse the records and put it into a proper structure. So first of all, we, wa we don't want to look into the proper data formats. We just want to make everything a string. For this, we will create this map type right here and put it into a variable called payload schema. And now I am ingesting here a bunch of code. So it's a bit more than our previous example, but this will help us to actually parse our data set right here. So we are again creating a Lakeflow declarative pipeline table. This time we call it telematics advanced or let's just call it telematics. We again provide some comments table properties and we also again just load the raw stream. But now you see we are making some more adjustments to actually parse it. The most important thing here is we are casting it right here to string. So basically we are making the bytes that we have seen earlier right here readable in a proper string format. And we create this new column called the raw JSON right here. We are again selecting all of the additional metadata from the Kinesis data stream. And we create a new column called decoded data where we actually even take it a step further. So we are not just pasting all the data that we converted right here into one column. No, we are actually decoding it first of all by using this from JSON function. And then we are creating proper columns to our target table. First of all, we will have one column called stream metadata where we put all of the kinesis specific stuff but then more importantly here we are having the actual data like the speed which will be super important later on in our analysis the latitude the longitude the event timestamp the chases number so the actual data basically will be put into proper columns now in our target table so if we execute this one right here 
you'll see that the output will now look way better for us. You see we're getting a new table right here, this time called Telematics. Again, it's reading those 40 records that are already sitting inside the stream. And now if we click into the table, we see, okay, now we properly have our columns, right? We have our latitude, we have our longitude, we have the speed, and we basically parsed everything. We transformed it from the byte format into proper strings, and then we even further separated it from this big JSON chunk into different kind of columns in our target table. Now you already saw, whenever I'm executing this pipeline here, it's actually reading from the stream and retrieving all the new data that was inserted there compared to the last run. And this is also the beauty of the Lakeflow declarative pipeline. So we did not have to specify any checkpointing location and stuff like that. All of that is abstracted away for us. And we also see streaming does not necessarily have to be a 24-7 running pipeline. It can also be executed in a batch mode, like, like we're doing it right now, right? We could also change this, so we could go into the configuration and we can say, okay, it's not a triggered pipeline anymore, but it's like a continuous pipeline. And then this would actually run in streaming mode and all the time reading from our streaming source and ingesting it in real time into our target tables. So let's try this out as well. Let's make this a streaming pipeline. And then let me under the hood send a few records in real time into the stream by executing a script I have. There we go. Script started and you see it's now writing records actually. So this is basically my script sending records every uh, I think three seconds or something like that. And you see the records being updated here in real time and you can even click on the actual declarative pipeline and also have this UI if you're more familiar to, to that one and see also here for the different streams. So in this case, we are now continuously running the simple stream right here where we are not pausing the records as well as the more advanced stream. And both of them ingest data in real time as this is now a continuously running pipeline. Now I stopped it. Let's quickly check in the Unity catalog how things look like. We are looking into the bros and then we see here those two tables. We can delete the second one as this was only for demonstration purposes. But then for the actual telematics table, we have now ingested our streaming data from our Kinesis data source. We see it's in proper columns right here. We can uh, look in the sample values. And here we see again what we also saw in the Lakeflow Declarative Pipelines UI. Cool, let's now continue with the other data sources. This was the first part of this end-to-end -end Databricks tutorial. In the next parts, we will focus on other ingestion sources. We will look into SQL Server and ingest it using Lakeflow Connect, as well as ingesting data from the object store using Autoloader. And then in the following videos, we will also touch the other aspects of this end-to-end -end project. To not miss that, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment and tell me what you think. And then I see you in the next video.